to Meet the Founders. I'm Sergio Angeles, host, and welcome to this awesome new TV show where we highlight and interview local founders uh, building and launching and working on incredible businesses here in Longmont, Colorado. Uh, to kick off the show, I'm with Glenn Hatcherson with Louisiana Glenn, and welcome. Thank you. Welcome. Yeah. Awesome. I'm Glad to be here. Yeah, thanks for being the guinea pig and for launching off this new series. I'm glad to do it. <laughs> I'm glad to do it. So why don't we start off with, uh, why don't you just tell me more about who you are and uh, your background. Right on. Uh, my name, once we, like you said, my name is Glenn Hatcherson. Uh, I'm from Franklin, Louisiana, from a little community called St. Joseph. Okay. And... Uh, it was pretty nice growing up because everybody in my neighborhood cooked. Mm -hmm. Every every person that you could think of in the neighborhood cooked, mm -hmm. fish, hunt. Okay. And you know, it yeah. was it was fun growing up. It was fun. And fast forward, once I got to high school, I got this job in a restaurant as a dishwasher okay. at the Forest Restaurant in Franklin. And when I did that, that was to see the cooks in there put together plates of food that were spectacular, looked good all the time. I knew that's what I wanted to do. Okay. I knew that that's what I wanted to do and got my formal training from Casino in Sheraton, Louisiana. Okay. Cypress Bayou Casino, got my formal training from that. Okay. And then uh, from there, I went on, worked offshore for a little bit, cooked on the offshore on the inland rigs, and then did that for a little bit, and then I got a job with a guy named Charlie Fall. Okay. I was the assistant manager at a restaurant. He had a meat market and a restaurant and a barbecue. That's where it really started. He taught me presentation and, and how to really take your time and cook food. And put it and present it to the public. And so not fast food. Not fast, <laughs> not slow fast, food. Not fast, fast food. Because uh actually he had a meat market, so it was fresh meat every day that went wow. from the butcher shop to the restaurant. Okay. And on weekends he barbecued. Okay. And then he showed me the art nice. of barbecuing. And I, it's fun for me. Barbecuing yeah. is fun. Really, smoking meat is, is fun for me. And I'm just, you know, just living the dream. Because I always said, when I was young, by 50, I wanted to have my own business. And how old are you now? I'll be 51. There you son. go. <laughs> I'll be 51 on June 6th. Awesome. And Happy I, early birthday. Thank you. And I'm, I'm really enjoying that feeling. It's been a process, but I, I, I'm, I'm loving every minute of it. Yeah. You know, being able to meet new people and interacting with other people and really putting my food out there and letting people taste it. It's, it's, it's real. I, I'm, it's real. Heartwarming. I I get excited all the time. I get yeah. excited about it. You know, like oh, when we talked for the uh, the robotic tech. Yeah. I I was excited about it just to get new people to see and taste something different that we don't have in Longmont, Colorado. So so maybe this is a good segue to tell people or you know the viewers. What is Louisiana Glens? And I'm sure some people will deduce it's about food, but why don't you talk about what it is? Louisiana Glen. It is 
comfort food, everything made from scratch. It's, it's nothing microwave, no microwave. It's all cooked from scratch. And I use a seasoning called Cajun Nation. And uh, we've been, I've been using it a lot and it's real good. No, uh, no sodium, no MSG, and it has a great, great flavor, great flavor. So, and I'm just trying to get, bring Louisiana to Colorado. Because we, we really don't, we really don't have, we have knockoffs, but we really don't have, we really don't have the, the, the love and the, the, the good food like we have back at home. So, yeah, what would you say differentiates your food versus other Louisiana-style restaurants in Longmont, if you would call them that? I know you call them, <laughs> them knockoffs. <laughs> it's 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 simple. It's simple food. It's simple food that I grew up with that my grandmother cooked, and I, I different recipes that I tweaked myself and made my own. And uh, it's 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 with love. And, and and passion behind it. Because like you said, you can have good food, but to really get into it, you know, it's, it's nothing fast about it, you know, like with my briskets. I stuff them with the whole, with the Trinity, and I enjoy What is that, what, if people don't know what Onions, bell peppers, uh, garlic, celery, and I also use a chow chow that Cajun Nation has. Okay. I stuff it with that and inject it with sweet garlic sauce that they have. Yeah. And it's cooked for 16 hours. Wow. It's cooked for 16 hours. So it's a lot of love and it's, it's a lot of passion behind it. It's a lot of passion behind it. So truly slow, slow, slow cooked, slow cooked to perfection, all the way to perfection, <laughs> all the way, 100%, 100%, 100%. Awesome. Yeah, I had the pleasure of tasting your food at uh, Longmont New Tech, and I thought it was incredible. The alligator bites, the boudin balls, the brisket, it was, I've never had anything like that. Right, right. And, it, and that was a, that was, that's why I took that opportunity to do that because that was, that was the, the foot in the door okay. to let, let different people, let people that don't even know me taste the food and have, and have an opinion about it and have some say in, in, you know, about the food and how it tasted and everything. And it was a lot of good feedback. Yeah. It was it was a lot of good feedback. It was it was actually good. I went home and sat back and actually I, I smiled for a, a couple hours that night. I was tired, but I actually sat and was like, "This is what you were trying to create. This is what you were trying to do. That was the effect that you wanted on people. That's the effect that you want to bring. That is always fresh and it's always good. And I call it gaff." Yeah. yeah, good yeah. ass food. Good ass food. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So maybe, well, maybe let's take a step back and talk about how, what made you launch Louisiana Club. I know you talked about you had wanted to start a business by the time you were fifty, but what were there other drivers for that and for the business to be to work for myself? and to actually work and, and do something that I love, you know. And May in 2016, my fiance, Christina, I forgot where we were coming from. And 
we were coming going back home and she was like, you know what, I'm gonna call you Louisiana Glenn. And from that moment, it stuck. Mm -hmm. I had a friend to draw the logo and everything and he mm -hmm. drew it from scratch. Oh wow. He, he put it down on scratch, freehand, and we took the logo and we ran with it. And that a lot of people ask, you know, you got the, the boot for Louisiana and yeah. you got the mountains. <laughs> and I tell people, it's not where I'm from, it's where I'm at. So bringing Louisiana to Colorado was, was the whole, that was the drive. To bring the bayou to the mountains. Okay. That was the whole drive. It's to kind it. of like from farm to table, but from bayou to the mountains. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. I like that. Exactly. So where where are you now with Louisiana Glens? Right now, we are in the process. We are in the process of uh, trying to get the share kitchen with uh, over at the Times Collaborative. Okay. And uh, we are waiting to do uh, the Board of Health, get all that stuff straight. Okay. But that's gonna be our home on Saturdays. That's, that's, that's the, the main, that's the meat and potatoes. That will be the meat and potatoes of the operation. Okay. That's gonna be the meat and potatoes of the operation. So we're waiting on that, and we, we still do caterings. I'm, I'm pushing a lot of, we do a lot of catering. We get, we get a couple mm -hmm. every month, and we wanna, when we get to the times, we wanna start with the pole bars. Okay. That's authentic, and it's, it's home, it's from home, and it's not a Subway sandwich. <laughs> it's a pole bar, <laughs> you know. So that's what we're gonna. That's what we're gonna promote the pole bars, shrimp pole bars, catfish pole bars, sausage pole bars, and we're gonna uh, we're gonna do the zaps potato chips yeah. and uh, lemonade, Kool Aid stuff like that. Okay. And then, what is your ultimate goal? Have a brick and mortar. My ultimate is to really have a brick and mortar. Okay. So I can really give people the other side that I have from working in restaurants and with the steaks and the baked fish, the grilled fish, the stuffed fish, the stuff that I grew up cooking from young, I want to really get that out to people. To be honest with you, I would like uh uh what's the uh, the name of uh the roost. Mm. I would really love to do something like that, have mm. a setup like that. Okay. You know, okay. you know, I love my saints. So <laughs> if my brick and mortar could have all the saints stuff in it, we could do Sunday football and mm -hmm. stuff like that, that would be, that's the ultimate, that, okay. that's the ultimate. So kind of a follow-up to that would be, yeah, how would you define success? How do I see? With Louisiana Glen or, you know, maybe you personally as a founder to the business. Just striving to be the best at what I do. Being the best person, mm -hmm. being the best chef, and putting out the best quality and taste of food. If I can do that and sustain that, that would be my success. Okay. And, and leave a legacy. You know, I, people go different places and start businesses and, and they leave a legacy, they name is basically printed out, is is there. Mm -hmm. And that's what I'm trying to, trying to leave a, a nice legacy with, with name 
and my family mm -hmm. because it all started like watching my grandmother when I was five or six. Couldn't leave out the couldn't leave out the yard. I couldn't go nowhere. I couldn't leave out the yard. I couldn't do all my friends had to come over. But whenever she was in the kitchen, I always <laughs> was watching what she was doing in the kitchen. Do you have do you have a favorite recipe or a favorite meal that your grandmother would make that to be honest with it, 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 it and it might be as simple, but it was baked chicken, rice, and pork and beans. Yeah. Very simple. And her second one was her fried fish. Okay. Fried fish, potato salad, and sweet pea. That was yeah. that was the two. <laughs> that was the two. And we ate all kind of fish. We had all kind of fish. So it was those two, that was the go-to. That was, that was, I will not move. I was a fat kid when I was <laughs> coming up. I was a fat kid. But that's, I, it was, it all started with her. It all started with her. And watching her just bake, cook. Set a recipe book on the table. Maybe open it once. Knew everything wow. in her head. Everything in her head. She would sit the cookbook out. Hmm. Might open it and just glance at it, but everything else was in her head. It was, she would put it together and the best tasted food I ever had in my life. The best tasted food I ever had in my life. And are you, is part of the food that you create now, I'm assuming inspired from your grandmother or using actual recipes from your grandmother? Inspired from my grandmother. Cause uh, like with the, uh, with the brisket, mm -hmm. I, you know, it was something, I never liked just the basic brisket. Let me I stuff it, let's see yeah. how. And I did that for a long time. And I do it with all my meats, if I'm not smoking. I will stuff a pork roast mm -hmm. and bake it or smother it down. And that's, you know, you get all the different flavors and everything. And it, it's so good. It's so good. It's so good. And it's hopefully this weekend you'll be able to get a chance to get some ribs this weekend. Yeah. And taste, and, and taste those. <laughs> well, but before we start recording, you were telling me about the upcoming barbecue, barbecue competition. Right. Do you want to talk a little bit about that? Maybe where some people might be able to go and buy right. some of your food? So it's in Loveland okay. at Stoke the Fire Barbecue. Okay. Uh, I don't know the address right off my head, but it's June 12th. And it's from 7 to 4. Okay. And it's a real, it's a real, uh, real competition and an appetizer competition. So I'm doing both. Okay. And uh, we're doing the ribs, and I'm also doing the, for the appetizer contest, I'm doing New Orleans style barbecue shrimp. Mm. Sounds delicious. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah, that's uh, one, and that's no June 12th. Okay. June 12th in Love. And this is my first time ever. Wow. This is my first competition, smoking meat. Barbecue competition. This is my first ever, so I'm kind of inter interested to see where I land in between 30, 35 different people. Yeah, I would like to see where I fit in. Have you competed in the past? No. Nope. So first time ever. First competed. time ever. Okay. First time ever. Excited about it too. I'm yeah. excited about it. I'm excited about it because I always wanted to do. I always wanted to do it, but when you start looking and that's a lot of money to to, to get in on the mm -hmm. on the scene. So when this came up, I was like, okay, this is my chance. So I can't I can't wait. I'm excited about, about this one. I'm excited yeah, about I'm this. I'm excited for you. I hope you win. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I, mean, I hope I win too. And that would give me that that would give some more publicity for Louisiana Glenn. Yeah. That would give more. So talking about, I guess, maybe 
slightly different from publicity, but what what has been challenging for you when starting Louisiana Glens? Funds. 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 Okay. And it's, it's been hard. And I just, I just, instead of stressing about the cash flow for it, mm -hmm. I just started cooking, putting it out. And then it just started mm -hmm. happening. Yeah. Everything started happening. When I stopped stressing about the cash flow, everything just started falling into place. Okay. Started falling into place. And but that's been that's been the the challenging part about it. You know, getting the getting the funds to get all the licenses and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. Because I don't wanna I don't wanna go backwards. I'm trying to mm -hmm. As we have, as we come up to something, and it's been funny the way it's been happening. Every time we needed to get a license or do something, mm -hmm. we got a catering or something happened to where, boom, it falls into place. And I just feel that it's 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 the time. It's time, hmm. and I will keep I will keep pushing because it's my dream. It's my dream. So I would keep pushing and doing everything in my power to make it happen. Yeah. I'm just taking it to try to build a brick wall. I'm just taking that brick, laying one brick at a time to try to get that wall. Yeah. You know, I had to do a lot of pivoting. I, I, I had to do pivot from this idea, pivot to this idea. It, it's been a lot, but it's been exciting and it's been goals are being accomplished. A actual goals are being accomplished with it. Stuff that I had on a goal list like in 2016, mm -hmm. it's all scratched out. And that's and that is the excitement part about it. And and I don't even like I said, I don't even worry about <laughs> you know, all that anymore. I just do what I do best. Yeah. Stick to what I do. Make it simple, make it plain, and and I just go with it. And I think that's that's the number one thing when I stop stressing about it, it just start falling into mm -hmm. place. You know, even with the the little event that Thursday yeah. when it came up, because I was like, man, I need to what can I do? to get this out some more. And we got the phone call and the email, like, hey, you wanna do this? Sure. And you know, I was like, I'm not, I'm not gonna worry anymore. And that, but that's the hardest thing is is getting the funding to get everything together. Mm -hmm. But hard work, it, it, it pays off in the long run. Yeah. It pays off in the long run. So you, you mentioned pivoting, um, and as you know, founders and, and really sort of any business, it's it is pivoting a lot. Of, is this going to work or is that going to work? And eventually finding your groove. So what what things did you try out? What what eventually led it to led to this? So actually, you know, I, was, I wanted the the trailer, the food truck, mm -hmm. or the trailer. And I started looking at the cause, like that's not gonna work. And I just, I was like, okay. I had already put in some catering jobs a few years ago. Mm -hmm. And I just went back to that to the stuff I had wrote was like, okay. So if we can go to someone and set up a party, if they want a party, we can go and set up, mm -hmm. cook, do the whole thing, clean up and do it like that. And when we were doing the website, mm -hmm. 
my guy was like, once you try, we'll try, we'll put the personal shelf in there. Mm -hmm. That in turn, I started binge watching personal shelves, mm -hmm. different cooking shows with personal shelves. And I started putting pieces to the puzzle together. And I got in contact, got in contact with a chef from New York. Okay. And he was like, you don't need to do all that. You go to your local all, uh, government office, or the city office, mm -hmm. and get your personal chef slash catering license. Mm -hmm. Did that, and then that opened the door right there. Because from that point, we got the catering uh, job with Firestone, with the city of Firestone. Okay. Word of mouth started getting out, and we started doing gumbo sales and red bean sales. Yeah. So that started generating the cash to make everything happen. So we just started pushing that and we found the times on on the by accident. Mm -hmm. We found that by accident. You're talking about the times collaborative, yeah, correct? We found yeah. that by accident. Because I was looking for a spot, looking for the commercial kitchen, and walked in and it was like, okay, this is this this is what is meant to be right here. So, and that's the whole drive right now. That's the drive to be able to accomplish when, once you set out a goal to accomplish that goal and then have five more goals that you're accomplishing at the same time is 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 real satisfying. It's real satisfying and exciting. Definitely. Yeah. What What would you say to others, you know, in a similar position or maybe wanting to start a food business? Not Louisiana, because there can only be one. Right. And that's you. Right. <laughs> but, you know, any other type of maybe restaurant, what, what advice would you give them? Stick to your guns. Because when you have a dream, not just anybody could come in and tell you, well, yeah, you can do this, you can do that. If it was that easy, you would be doing it. Stick to your guns, set your goals, set your goals high. You're going to get knocked down, but as long as you can get back up and brush it off and continue, continue to fight. Don't, your, your dream, your passion, you have to, you have to stick to it because if you don't, if you, you're going to have the days to where you're going to not want to do it, you're going to feel tired and everything, but you got to keep on going. You got to keep on driving. Even with me, it was in the middle of the night, I would get ideas and stuff. So I had to write them down. Or if I didn't write them down, it, it would come back to me. But you have to you have to stay on your path. You have to stay on, you have to beat that path. Don't let that path beat you. Beat you. It might feel like it, but all you got to do is fight and keep on, keep on striving to be the best at what you do. Be the best at what you do. Take the best things that you know how to do. And in, in, in the restaurant business, you don't want to make a big old menu and have all, stick to what you do best. And if you do that, that will, you will, You'll get the meat and potatoes. You'll get the meat and potatoes with it. You'll get the meat and potatoes with it. But just stick to your goals, stick to your dream, and if it's your passion 
and, and it's something that you like doing, nobody nobody can stop you. Nobody can stop you. That's great advice. Thank you. Yeah. What would you say is uh, what's your favorite dish? What's the your favorite thing that you cook that you want everyone to taste? If it could only be one thing that I do, yeah. Man, my crawfish etouffee. Yeah. My crawfish etouffee with the potato salad and the sweet pea. How would how would you describe it? I just it's 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 creamy. Oh, uh, you get you know you you have the, the fish and the crawfish in it, and I, it's made with cream of mushroom. Okay. So I make I don't make mine with raw. I make it with cream of mushroom, and with the holy trinity with the onions, bell peppers, garlic, celery, green onion. And it's just it's just a slow cook, and it takes maybe thirty minutes. It's, it's I call it my my Rachel Ray, my thirty minute mm -hmm. meal. Christina don't say that. She <laughs> said take. She said I like to draw it out the whole day. <laughs> but the crawfish a two fate is my my go to whenever whenever I want. That's my go to. My second go to. <laughs> My second go-to is a smothered short ribs. Smothered short ribs. Well, uh, we y'all say out here in Colorado, braised. Y'all say braised. Uh, okay. But I, I smothered with, with in gravy. That's so. There's some lingo differences there between Louisiana right. and Colorado. Right, right. Because you know, basically, we we like the Waffle House in Louisiana. We scatter, smother, and cover everything. <laughs> you know, we scatter, smother, and cover everything. That's that's what it that's what it's all about. You know, the gravy and the rice, and and that's that's what we don't have out here. That's what we don't have somewhere where you can just you could go in and get nice gravy and rice, cornbread, stuff like that. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Just just the comfort food, the comfort food, to make you make you want to feel like you're sitting on the bike or sit, you know, you're sitting in Louisiana. Yeah. Yeah. I remember when, uh, when we spoke at the event, um, you were mentioning that you were, imp uh, I wouldn't say importing, but maybe imp importing. Get shrimp, shrimp from, from all, my, all my seafood. So it's being flown over from Louisiana. From Louisiana. To maintain the all quality. Authentic. Authentic. Authentic, cause I I can't go I can't go to King Super, Safeway, <laughs> and, and 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 put some shrimp and tell them it's Louisiana Glen. I can't do that. <laughs> so I'm, I'm working. That's another thing I'm working on getting all my seafood together. Okay. All my uh to get it flown in fresh. Whatever whenever we have seafood, and that's why I don't really promote the seafood right now. Gotcha. Because I'm trying to get everything, put everything together on that. Just pivot to that. Make it show all the seafood is fresh every time you get it. And that's 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 the whole that that's the meat and potatoes behind Louisiana Glen. Making sure I get the fresh seafood from Louisiana and actually trying to get together with the farmers out here mm. and getting the fresh produce. Okay. Trying to keep everything local. Keep every, local as much as possible. Yeah, meat, mm. you know, grass fed meat, the uh the local farmers with, with the onions, bell peppers, all the stuff that I use mm -hmm. and just having it all come together. I, I in, in my head I just I smile every time I think about it at home. I smile every time, you know. I could get the fresh seafood in. I got the fresh produce, and it's just it's gonna all come together real nice. And it's gonna all come together real nice. Yeah, I'm really excited for when you're able to open up a brick and mortar. And, yes, and have a yeah, an incredible Louisiana experience. Exactly, bringing the experience up here to Colorado, bringing yeah. that experience to everybody here, to everybody here. Absolutely. Yeah. Is there anything that uh, I guess to just kind of wrap up, 
wrap up this episode, is there anything that else that you'd like to tell our audience and viewers about you or your business? Just be looking for Louisiana Glenn real soon. And uh, you can get in contact with us mm -hmm. uh, through the website or on the Facebook at Louisiana Glenn okay. or at uh, Glenn Hatcherson. Uh, what else? On yeah. TikTok. TikTok. I put a lot of videos up on TikTok. Yes, yeah, at Glenn Hatcherson. Okay. And I, like, yeah. And I'm trying to think. Can yeah, I see the barbecue competition? The barbecue coming. competition. Yeah, barbecue competition will be out there again June 12th. Okay. From 7 to 4. And I think that would be a nice turnout. But just, you know, you and shock with the fork. Shockwiththefork.com. You can go to the website and, like I say, we uh, we give quotes pretty reasonable and fast. Okay. We give you know if you get in contact with us and we'll we have uh, different items up on the website and it's basically whatever you want. I'm creating it for the customer. Mm -hmm. Every customer is different. So every customer gets handcrafted the best food for them and the personal shelf. Yeah. Uh, and we'll also do some cooking classes once we get over at the times, you know, the basic yeah. roux, the ba how to make a basic roux and different stuff like that. You know, it's just being able to teach people how to do stuff yeah absolutely. and and you, you still leave a legacy with it but actually you know you can get there and do this it's not hard yeah. you know what I'm saying it's not hard if you if you got time you can do it if you got the time to spend in the kitchen for a little bit you can do it I know everybody don't like to be in the kitchen like that <laughs> but you know you you have time it's 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 wonderful. I love it. That if if I can if I could cook every day, I'd be the happiest man in the world and make money with it too. <laughs> and, <laughs> and you man. are right, <laughs> right? <laughs> exactly, awesome. exactly. Well, thank you so much, Glenn. For thank you for being here and for telling your story and for telling people about Louisiana, Glenn. Thank you. Yeah. And one more last note. Absolutely. Uh, the Cajun Nation sees me. Yes. CajunNation.com. Okay. You can get it on Amazon. Awesome. It's uh, in your Butcher Frank here in Longmont. Oh, there you go. Yeah. And it's about to be in Stoke the Fire Barbecue in Lovely. Perfect. So, awesome. yeah. Sounds good. Well, thank you, Glenn. And as Glenn would say, that is the meat and potatoes of this episode. So thank you all for tuning in and watching, and we will catch you next time.